Hi Restore, my name is Neil McCarthy. I am the assistant pastor over here at Tenerife Family Church. I am here today to read us some scripture. It's out of the Gospel of Mark. It's in chapter 6 and we're going to start at verse 30. Then the apostles gathered to Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said to them, come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going and they did not even have time to eat. So they departed to a deserted place in the boat by themselves. But the multitude saw them departing and many knew him and ran there on foot from all the cities. They arrived before them and came together to him. And Jesus, when he came out, saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion for them because they were like sheep not having a shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. When the day was now far spent, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place and already the hour is late. Send them away that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy themselves bread for they have nothing to eat. But he answered and said to them, you give them something to eat. And they said to him, shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? But he said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they found out, they said, five and two fish. Then he commanded them to make them all sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in ranks, in hundreds and in fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven, blessed and broke the loaves, and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fish he divided among them all. So they all ate and were filled. And they took up the twelve baskets full of fragments and of the fish. Now those who had eaten the loaves were about five thousand men. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he sent the multitude away. And when he sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. Now when evening came, the boat was in the middle of the sea, and he was alone on the land. Then he saw them straining at rowing, for the wind was against them. Now about the fourth watch of the night he came to them walking on the sea, and would have passed them by. And when they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were troubled. But immediately he talked with them and said to them, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. Then he went up into the boat to them, and the wind ceased. And they were greatly amazed in themselves beyond measure, and marvelled. For they had not understood about the loaves, because their heart was hardened. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret, and anchored there. And when they came out of the boat, immediately the people recognised him ran through that whole surrounding region and began to carry about on the beds those who were sick to wherever they heard he was. Wherever he entered into villages, cities or the country, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might just touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched him were made well. Incredible scripture we've just read there. I see here throughout those verses uh, Jesus is letting us see his divine characteristics. You see with the healings that we just read in those last verses Jesus is showing us that he's a God who heals. He heals us. We also saw when he walked on water to the boat where the disciples were that he's an omnipotent God he can do all things. He can control the weather. He can walk on water. There is nothing that he cannot do. Also, we see when he fed the multitude. That he's a God who provides. He's our Jehovah Jireh. He provides. 
Now, seeing that those verses where he provided for his people, the multitude who were, who were being taught by him that day, does it remind us of way back in the Old Testament how God looked after his people, the Israelites, when they had escaped Egypt? They uh, were in, a, again, a deserted place and God provided for his people. At that time, he provided for them with manna from heaven. And I just wonder, when Jesus was about to feed these people, he was thinking whether to do the same thing. But he didn't, did he? This time, it was a bit different. Instead of manna from heaven, he got his disciples to hand out the bread. His disciples handed out the food. It's not changed much today. Jesus wants to use his disciples, us, the church, to feed the poor and the needy. But interestingly here, as we do with uh, physical food, for me, Jesus here had prioritised something else. He had prioritised spiritual food. Jesus had been teaching them all day. He had been feeding them all day. I'm not sure his disciples fully understood what he was doing. They were more concerned about the people's physical needs. Jesus wants us to feed his people. He wants us to go out into the deserted places, into the dry places, and feed people. Not only with physical food, but with spiritual food. Sometimes we don't know what to give. Jesus told his disciples, what do you have? What do you have to give? Just five loaves and two fish. What we have might not seem a lot, but we have the gospel. You see, Jesus prioritised giving the word of God to the people first. He had taught them all day before he fed them. We have the gospel of Jesus Christ inside us. We have a responsibility as believers in the Lord to give the world his gospel. The message of salvation, the good news. Let's pray. Father, we pray for the work that's been done here in Tenerife and in London. We pray, Father, that you would give us opportunities to feed the needy. Whether that would be opportunities with physical food or opportunities with spiritual food. We pray we would have them. We thank you for providing for us. For putting us in a position where we can help others. We pray, Lord God, for the boldness to be able to step out and feed the people who so desperately need your touch at this moment. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.